Hello, and welcome to our Lunch and Learn Bible Study. I am Pastor Bruce McKinney, and I will be your instructor for today. Uh, we are in our New Testament survey, and what we're doing is taking a look at the books in the New Testament, and we're picking out a chapter and studying a few verses out of that chapter. And so this is designed to give you a high-level study of some of the books in the New Testament. So let's uh, start our study by uh, praying as we usually do. Dear God, we pray that you will open up our hearts, our minds, and our understanding for what it is that you have for us today, Lord. We thank you for those that are watching. We pray, Lord, that this will be beneficial to them, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. So we are studying today out of 2 Timothy, and we're going to uh, be looking at the fourth chapter. But before we do, let me give you some general information about the book of 2 Timothy. The author of the book is the Apostle Paul, and the time that it was written is A.D. 64. It was written from Rome. In fact, Paul was in prison when he wrote this book. Uh, but this book, uh, 2 Timothy is part of the uh, epistles, the, what's called the pastoral epistles written by Paul. And so uh, the three letters uh, or epistles are 1 Timothy, Titus, and 2 Timothy. So we're studying uh, 2 Timothy. We studied 1 Timothy last week and 2 Timothy this week. And that's because, of course, they follow one another sequentially in the Bible. But actually, the book of Titus comes between those two books, if you look at it chronologically. So let's move on. Let's go into our study today. And we're going to look at this fourth chapter in the uh, book of 2 Timothy. So Paul gives a charge to Timothy, and this is what it is in chapter 4, verse 1. He says this, in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead, and in view of his appearing and his kingdom, I give you this charge. So Paul is putting great importance on this by saying, this is in the presence of God and Christ Jesus, the one who will judge both the living and the dead, those who will be caught up in the resurrection and those who will uh, be called up, who will be living and called up then. So uh, he said, I, I, I'm doing this in Jesus' name. So basically, that's what he said. I give you this charge. And what is the charge that Paul is giving to his uh, protege, Timothy? And in the second verse, it reads this. It says, preach the word. Be prepared in season and out of season. Correct, rebuke, encourage with great patience and careful instructions. So the charge that Paul gives to, Timothy's is, to Timothy is this. Preach the word. Don't be, now a lot of us use our experience and things like that and and what happened with us personally, that's, that's all right. But the preaching is what the word of God is what we as preachers and, and, and preachers should be preaching. It says, be prepared in season and out of season. What does that mean? That means be ready at all times to preach the word. Some folks don't get a sermon ready until they are told, well, you're going to be preaching this Sunday. That is not what you do. You should always be ready to preach. I had a pastor that told me every preacher should carry three sermons, one in his Bible, one in his pocket, and one in his heart. So that's what you should do. You should have, and I'm going to make this for both for, for the brothers and the sisters. You should carry one in your Bible, one in your, uh, in your, in your purse or your, uh, or your pocket, and one in your heart, you should have at least three sermons, okay, at all times. And he, and he says what? What should be in that? Uh, be prepared in season and out of season to do what? To correct wrong behavior, to correct uh, uh, incorrect behavior, to rebuke wrong behavior, 
to encourage good behavior. So that's what you need to be able to do. Correct wrong behavior, rebuke bad behavior, encourage good behavior. With And it says with great patience and careful instruction. See, the thing is that some of us believe that when we preach and when we're telling people what to do, that that is the same as making them do right. You cannot make people do right. That's the job of the Holy Spirit, and that is the job of people obeying and being faithful to God. Our jobs as preachers is to preach the word of God and to correct what is wrong, rebuke what is bad, and encourage what is good, and and, and be careful in instruction. So the thing about it is that you just don't throw something together. You prayerfully put that sermon together. Okay, so let's move on to the uh, third verse. And it says this, For the time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. Now, I may be the first preacher you hear say this, and I'm not necessarily saying that I'm right or wrong, but I'm going to declare that this is a prophecy about social media. So, because this is what happens on social media. People gather around those who's going to say what they want them to, what they want to hear. But that is not what the word of God is about. It is not about what you want to hear. The word of God is about thus says the Lord. This is what you should do. It is about sound doctrine, sound teaching. Doctrine is teaching. But there will come a time, and that time is now. It is here when people will not hear sound doctrine. Anybody that has adult children and have told them uh, what to do and things like that, and they did the opposite, knows this to be true, okay? But the thing is that we are to continue to preach sound doctrine. Why? Why would we do that? You ask the question. Why even bother, Pastor Bruce? Because the reason is this. They will never have the excuse that they did not know better. That's the reason for us preaching. That's the reason for the gospel being spread throughout the world. Because when God gets ready to, to, to judge the world, no one will have the excuse of saying, no one told me, or uh, saying, I didn't know this because the gospel would have been preached to the whole world. And so that's our duty is to tell the truth. We can't make people do right, but we can tell them what is right. So let's move on. And in the fourth and the fifth verse of the uh, fourth chapter it says this, they will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myths. In other words, they will believe a lie before they will believe the truth. And that is playing out in our society today. And if you don't know, just keep looking and just keep listening and you'll find out people will believe a lie before they will believe the truth. But Paul says this to Timothy, he says, but you, and, and he might as well be saying, but you preacher, you teacher, you instructor, but you keep your head in all situations. Don't let this mess get to you. He says, but keep your head in all situations, enduring hardship. Now notice, he didn't say there might be hardship. He instructs us, instructs us to do what? to endure hardship, do the work of an evangelist. What does an evangelist do is he, he or she spreads the word of God. That is what we are to do. And it says, discharge all the duties of your ministry. Whatever God has called you to do, that is what you are to do. You are to fulfill those duties of that ministry that God has called you to do. Don't allow yourself to get wrapped up in the mess and the frustration and the craziness that's going on. 
Keep your head. How do you keep your head? I'm going to tell you how you keep your head. You pray. You keep praying. You spend time with God. You study your word. So it says, keep your head in all situations. Endure hardship. Do the work of an evangelist. Discharge. In other words, do all the duties of your ministry. Don't worry about anybody else. You do what God has called you to do and you will be rewarded by the Lord accordingly. And somebody said, somebody said, let the church of God say, amen. So that concludes our study. And just think of it. This is a lunch and learn. Now you have enough time to eat your lunch. So we thank God for you watching this video. And I am Pastor Bruce McKinney. And I pray that God will continue to bless you in your lives. May God bless you.